can the quantum enlightenment system accelerate your wealth manifestation? Would you like to learn about seven life lessons that can bring you peace in your life, about an advanced healing system that can accelerate your wealth manifestation? And what is it like to work with a powerful angelic team? You'll want to listen to my amazing interview with the remarkable Ellen Catherine Shambhala, who is the pioneer of an advanced healing method called the Quantum Enlightenment System. The interview is fantastic. She's offering a free Akashic Record healing session. You will learn so much and you will love Ellen like I do. Hi there, and welcome to the Grief and Rebirth podcast. I'm your host, author and trauma survivor, Irene Weinberg, here to encourage you wherever you are in your healing journey. In each episode, I chat with incredible grief and trauma specialists, healers, mediums, and celebs, as well as remarkable people who have inspiring healing stories to share. If you're looking for a podcast that's both uplifting and inspiring, you've found it. Let us help you find your joy in life. Hi, everyone. I'm speaking to you from my studio in West Orange, New Jersey, and I could not be more delighted to have the pleasure of interviewing the multifaceted Ellen Catherine Shamalo, who is a quantum healer, an enlightenment mentor, a sound bath practitioner, an international speaker, a best-selling author, a soul care coach specializing in the Akashic Records, and a pioneer of an advanced healing method called the Quantum Enlightenment System. With powerful assistance from her angelic team, Ellen helps people break free from the cycles of dysfunction, karma, and suffering in their lives, accelerating their path and activating their limitless potential. This awakening allows them to serve their life's purpose and live lives filled with happiness, joy, abundance, and inner peace as they ascend to the 5D paradigm, which is the emerging shift in consciousness and awareness that will herald an extraordinary period of transition and accelerated evolution for all of us. I'm looking forward to asking Ellen, who will be speaking to us today from Boca Raton, Florida, about the seven life lessons she learned that brought her peace during a dark time in her life. Her advanced healing method called the Quantum Enlightenment System. What it is like to work with her powerful angelic team. Her, the emerging shift in consciousness and awareness called 5D and more for what is surely going to be a remarkable interview with a wonderful person who will inspire and enlighten us. Hi, Ellen. A truly warm welcome to Grief and Rebirth Podcast. Oh my God, I'm so excited to be here. And thank you so much for that beautiful introduction. I cannot yes. wait to share the stories because it seems like you and I have a very similar path. We do, and we're going to help a lot of people with this interview. I just know it. And people are really going to enjoy it. You've got so much to share with people. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> uh, you're doing such great work in the world. And I'm, I'm really excited to have you join our Grief and Rebirth community. It's wonderful to have you here. Thank you. I'm so excited. You're welcome. So let's talk about, let's get you started where you started. So mm. for as long as you can remember, you were secretly angry, bitter, and disconnected. What was the cause of your suffering with pain so unbearable that you contemplated suicide? And how did you mask how angry you actually were? And there are a lot of people, Ellen, I am sure, who are walking around with big masks, masking the pain that they're feeling. I was in, their in lives. such denial of it. It was a huge denial. I, you know, my mom was telling me for years, Ellen, you're so angry. And I thought, what are you talking about? I'm not angry. Everybody loves me. I'm so like happy, bubbly, and whatever, you know, and it's because. It's like this mask that I created for myself just was so glued on that I didn't even realize that there was something so deep within me that was so unhappy. And this discontentment that I was I was harboring inside me was basically because 
there was something missing in my life that I couldn't put a finger on. I didn't realize what it was, but I knew that I was just doing everything that I had to do. And where it really started was me learning not to love myself. It, it, this bitterness, this anger, all of this, it was just coming from the truth that I could not love myself because I was bullied for a very long time. There you go. And I wanted to know what happened to you that made, made you so fun angry. of. Yeah, I was made fun of and I felt like I wasn't accepted. I felt like I was rejected and I was constantly, you know, unhappy because I was living in this space where I needed to like buy my friends or I needed to, yeah, like I would always buy them gifts because I was, I was happy they were friends with me because everybody else was just making fun of me. It was terrible. Why did they make fun of you? I didn't look this way. (laughs) Well, can I tell you that happened to me too? I mean, I didn't look this way either. And kids are so cruel. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It was kids a lot about are that. cruel. They just picked on you, right? But you know what? It's what I realized now is that it was just a pure projection of their own unhappiness that I just got the, I got lucky to get it on me. And it's also part of my contract. So I can't really be a victim to it. I understand that all of these experiences that I've, that I've had, was part of what I was meant to experience in order for me to get down this route. And so there was this deep, unsatisfying feeling about like me, like who I am. I shouldn't love myself because nobody else does. And then I felt like I was also, because of that, <laughs> um, and and growing up in the culture where we have to get married and and have to have family and and all of that, here I am, a person not knowing that I don't love myself, but trying super hard to make sure that a man would fall in love with me because I was like scared that nobody would. And I would take shit from all these guys and take shit from all these people and just basically be a doormat to everybody and not have these boundaries and not have this this sense of like security. And it was, again, part of the journey. So because I was so insecure with myself and had so much anger around that. I was also feeling like aside of something, feeling like there was, there was something else missing in my life. And I didn't realize what it was until after I got married. So I was in this like societal automatic Ellen, you know, with a mask on showing people that I was happy so that people can't bully me even more. And so I got married to a really handsome guy and thought, wow, this guy is out of my league. Um, I need to make sure I keep him. By the way, I was high throughout the whole time, even before I got married to him, because what I, what I had to do was dumb down my Ellen-ness because I was afraid that if he saw how I really was, that he would think I'm too much and not, um, not want to get married to me. So I was high every time we went out just to like calm down and be easygoing and say yes to everything and blah, blah, blah. And I realized when I stopped smoking after we got married, shit hit the fan. I was triggered all the freaking time. And we were fighting the first year of our marriage. We almost got divorced. And I thought, oh my God, what are people going to say? What am I going to do? I'm not going to be able to find somebody else. I better like shut my mouth. And I, we, we decided we're going to go for healing. And there's a story behind the whole healing thing with him. Um, when I first met him, he and I kind of had like this vow to each other that we would always better ourselves. And our dates consisted of like watching spirit science, which was teaching us about intuition and all these other things. And I remember that was like my catalyst to coming back to learning more about who I was and my gifts. And I remember being in the shower one day and getting all this information coming through. And I thought, what the hell is this? And I Googled it in the middle of the shower so that I can understand, like, what is this information that's coming on with me? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And that's, that's when the journey began. Um, when I understood like, well, going back to your question, the bitterness was, you know, being made fun of. And it brought me into this, into this relationship. That was a karmic relationship meant to really get me back to myself. It was meant to trigger (laughs) you and and to to be the catalyst for you. Um, I know that your unresolved and unhealed lessons manifested as limited cash flow, depleted energy, constant mind chatter, and episodes of anxiety. I can totally relate. 
So how did you, <laughs> how did you, you want to talk about how that manifested for you in, in, in all of those deficits and how you, how you were able to start to move away from that mindset and also these healing gifts you're talking about, being able to hear people in the shower and all, were these all gifts you had been born with and always had? or And did they include mediumship? I mean, when do, did they just kick in in the shower that day or had you had them before? So there's two different things. That was intuition that was coming through. So I was just fully receiving information or downloads. Um, but when I was younger, I did see, um, I didn't see, I felt, and I, I, I remember like, I have this image of me laying in bed and just having a conversation with the angels. And I would just talk to them and, and, and tell them like what I wanted and tell them how, you know, I wanted to experience my life and, you know, thank them for everything. And I was really young. So I, you know, where I got that from, I don't know, but that's, that's how I remember my nights being. And, um, I remember feeling them around me. I remember certain things happening that scared the shit out of me. And I remember actually seeing one spirit that was always behind me. And I would see it in the mirror. And it, I was, I was scared. Like th they didn't say anything. She didn't say anything. She didn't do anything. She just stood behind me. And I remember that time I shut down because it was two weeks. I couldn't tell anyone because I knew everyone would think I was like crazy. Exactly. And I felt, you know, I, I can't tell anyone here. So I'm just, I guess, block this, you know? Um, and that's when, when I was in the shower and, and having these, these Andre be my catalyst, Andre is my husband when I realized, okay, there's, there's something here, something's getting, something's coming to me. And because I researched whatever I was getting, which was more spiritual information about how we choose to have our own bodies, how we choose to be in a certain family, all that stuff was coming through. Like I've never heard it before. And that's when I Googled it and I saw all oh, these are coming from spiritual websites and I started reading more into it. Um, but to answer the other question about unresolved um, lessons. So in our life, we go through a lot of these experiences so that we can understand what lessons we're meant to learn. And they're not, I, I really try to stress this really um, thoroughly so that people understand it's not lessons about, oh, I know not to trust this person anymore. Oh, I know to keep my guard up, or I know to close my heart and not to open myself up that those are not the lessons. There are seven major life lessons. And I and I can say this with like absolute certainty because it is it, it is what actually shifted my life and made me see things in such a different perspective. And how did you come even, upon these seven life lessons? How did you learn about them? One of the um one of the emotional healing retreats that my husband and I had gone to was uh a healing retreat in, in uh, Florida. Um, and it was with a doctor or a reverend that um, had downloaded these seven life lessons. And he was teaching it to people and teaching us about dynamics, relationship dynamics and the lessons. And um, he had also helped us heal internally. Like we were getting all these other services to help clear and detoxify our physical vessels. And um, when I learned about it, I thought, oh, that's, that's really interesting. Okay. But then one day when I was super clear after like, it was the ninth day of our 10 day treat, uh, retreat, I was so clear. And I said, I knew I had to bring this, this healing to other people. I just didn't know I was going to do it through the life lessons. And when I came back to, when we both came back to New York, I remember opening up a business because I heard high vibrations Inc. And I'm like, I don't know what the hell that is, but I'm going to open that one up. And then, um, I heard, you know, that I was going to be working with the life lessons within myself first. And so that was my goal to see what are these life lessons that I'm supposed to understand. And I would see which one, what, what they all were, how they played out in my life, what experiences I had that, that I was supposed to learn from and understanding that I was so disconnected from my body that I did not even know that 
all the suffering that I had from limited cash flow, the anxiety, the mind chatter was because I wasn't connected to my higher self. I wasn't connected to my God frequency. Wow. And that is what made me realize, shit, if I, you know, once I got connected, once I had that, that stronger connection with my higher self and was dissolving a lot of limiting belief programs from my cellular memory, I stopped having mind chatter. Wow. <laughs> I wow. stopped having anxiety. It was like a new person was born. Wow. Now I want everyone to understand your higher self is your soul. And we have a sliver of that soul that's in us as we manifest. Correct? Yes. 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 Okay. So that's when we talk about higher self. Ellen is talking about the fact that she actually learned to be able to connect with her soul, her oversoul, right? That. And the goal is to essentially make space in the physical vessel um, by clearing out on a cellular level, all the toxins that we carry from emotional wounds, past lives, current life, um, you know, ancestral DNA, all that stuff, so that we can make space for more of our soul to be embodied in this physical vessel. Because we come through with a lot of karma and a lot of wounds from other lives and other things. I know that. Can I just, I want to mention to you and, and disagree with me if uh, I'm not right about this, but it seems that I picked up, I love your, the seven life lessons. It's one of them is failure isn't fatal and success isn't final. No. <laughs> is that one of them? Okay. No. What, what are the, life lessons, the seven life lessons are separation, judgment, forgiveness control, identity, unconditional love, and um, divine guidance. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. You want to make a comment on any of them before we move on to the next? <laughs> well, I'll tell you that um, when I first started working with the life lessons, I was scared to go into business as a woo-woo person, right? I'm like, okay, how can I, how can I create this easier? And so what I did was I saw what I was working with IBS and irritable, bowel, is irritable, irritable bowel syndrome. Okay. And I had that, right. Cause nobody knows how to really say it, but I had that. And I understood when I, when I broke down the life lessons to understand the symptoms, which each one, there were symptoms that fell under the categories of the life lessons. I understood that IBS was really because they don't know how to say this in the Western, you know, medical industry, medical world, that IBS was really a disconnection from your soul. Wow. Because the number one life lesson that was showing up was separation. And separation is really causing the anxiety and all the fear and the grievance because you feel like you are alone and you feel like you don't have connection to a higher power, to your God self. That's really what IBS is. And when I started to work with that, that's when my IBS went away. I would imagine that also causes other maladies in the body too, that whole not being connected to your soul. Yours expressed itself as IBS, but there are probably yeah. others that express themselves that way also, right? Yes, there are. Um, but for whatever reason, I was given IBS because IBS is in the power center. It's in your solar plexus. And that's where our sexual energy is. It's our creative energy that's our god energy so if we are so sick with this in the stomach and there's no cause or reason it's because there the truth is there's such a blockage there that we're not connected to our our higher higher self to our god self right? and you help people to connect to their god self yes <laughs> okay, that's the exciting part. I yeah. want to ask you also about your husband because he did take his life and yeah. it transformed you um, from a victim to a warrior. And so, and you learned a lot of lessons from your relationship with him, even after his passing. So you want to tell us, so this was all part of, I look at also for my own life, all the things that have happened to me that built into lesson upon lesson upon lesson, right? That I well, can help others with. Yeah. So I'm happy that I became a spiritual teacher prior to him passing. And um, when we came to Florida, we were looking at ways to be able to transform ourselves more um, because I felt like the transformations I received when I lived in New York 
was okay. They weren't deep. I still felt like there was still some more work to be done because I, I can feel it through my business that I needed to be at a certain level. And so we decided that we're going to do medicine. So we went to medicine retreats and, um, plant medicine, feel- right? You're talking about plant medicine. Yes. So we went, yeah, plant medicine retreats. And I remember at that time, my husband was like on, on this like hiatus to really cleanse himself. And he just really, really wanted to take care of his emotional self and whatever. Um, Because for many years, he was always trying to figure out what was the pain in his body. And I kept telling him, but even though I was telling him, I I didn't know what I was talking about, basically, in his eyes. Um, And he just wasn't ready to receive that information. He he was not ready, like most men are not ready to really fully receive that information. So I let him go on his journey, essentially. And um, he realized that now it's finally time to stop going to these doctors and really understand, like, on an emotional level, what's going on. So... We did plant medicine and um, I, so I was already someone who had like a, a different mindset or different perspective on life, but I wasn't the same person. I didn't see things the way I see things now. And after his death is when the wealth manifestation formula actually was born. Um, and the, the quantum enlightenment system was born before he passed. Oh, so, interesting. yeah, it's, it's like backwards, but I needed that for my journey. So basically, um, when he passed, I was myself like suicidal because what you don't know is that prior to him passing for several, for several years before that was what made me happy, what made me continue going on is that I knew I had a mission and I knew that I had to fulfill this mission and my, my my drive was for me to constantly like work on myself and to heal myself so that I could be at a higher vibration. That's all I knew. And so when he passed away, I was not at the financial place that I could be to take care of my son or to live in this luxury apartment that he decided to get out of nowhere. I was not in the place to be able to just work because all I could see was the linear way of, oh my God, now I'm going to be working nine to five jobs and try to get my son and live this life. And where's my purpose going to be? And I said, the hell with it. I'm going to take my life too, because I can't live. And leave your that son. Can't. You were going to leave your son without parents altogether. I didn't know because that's that to me, that's what I wanted to do. But my, my, my friends were, my life coach actually was also the one to tell me like, what are you going to do with Jakob? And I thought maybe I should give him up for adoption. He doesn't need a mom like me who can't fucking make it. And that's where I was. Wow, I was impressed. Wow. 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 Well, I was distraught because I felt like I couldn't, I, I wasn't going to be able to fulfill my mission. And that in itself would get me so down that I would not be the best mom. And I knew that Jakob couldn't, was not, you know, my yes son, Jakob didn't deserve that. So I just felt like I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to, how to stay, but my life coach, thankfully, who was the one who was working with us with plant medicine, um, because he knew how much I loved going to plant medicine, he didn't let me come back to plant medicine until I learned how to sit with myself because he said, Ellen, you go to plant medicine. You don't sit with yourself. You're not going within. You're walking around and talking and like you're you're getting something out of it, but you're not getting the most out of it. And he knew that was like my my passion and my way that I really wanted to because I knew it was opening my heart. And I felt like once I was opening my heart, I started receiving more clients. And so I loved going to it because I was receiving an influx of clients from after my healings. So then he didn't let me come back. And he said, you need to learn how to sit with yourself. And I said, shit, okay, let's let's figure out how to do this. And so I remember I spoke to a medium who told me, I don't usually connect with with, uh, past past ones um, who who haven't been on the other side for more than six months. But I was connecting with her within a few weeks and she was like, I feel his energy 
And she was telling me there there's a massive amount of love that he did this for me. And I, like, I knew that, but he even said that, but she was saying the same thing that he did this for me. He wanted to get out of my way because he knew that I had such a mission that he was drowning my energy, which is another story. But, um, she said that there's, there's so much love. And so I use that information to be able to connect to him in meditation. So I decided to go within and, um, I would, have like his energy and his love come and like wrap me so that I would go within. And so that was the beginning. That was the beginning for me. And and I would receive messages about his death because when he passed away, when I was at the airport, even though I was like a zombie, like, you know, I knew that he was going to die, but it, it was just kind of like, Hey, here it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not a shock, but it's also kind of a shock that it actually happened because when it's in your mind it's in one thing but when it's actually in real life it's another that's right so all i heard was contracts 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 and then i realized okay this was a contract that we had prior to coming here that he he was meant to take his life he had a choice to either stay or take his life and these are the lessons that we were going to learn from it and so because i understood that there was a contract my meditations with him would, would be to understand what are you trying to show me? And so I decided to feel into the energies that I was feeling within my body, which the life lessons have three to six different emotions attached to them. So how I am doing it is different than when the doctor who showed us about the life lesson who taught us about the life lessons. I do it based on what emotions you're feeling. And so I wasn't feeling so much anger. Other people were feeling anger because they were in their own lesson for anger is connected to control. So when they felt like there was no control on their part of what they were going to do or how this would happen or why they couldn't stop him, I didn't feel any of that. What I felt was more about understanding what had led him to this point, right? And I and I would play out all these scenarios in my head and I would have all these understandings. And then finally, what made me understand the lessons was realizing that my experiences with him was basically a mirror of myself. Oh, wow, how fascinating. And so I remember lighting candles, which was my way of, you know, in Judaism, you light candles every month, but I didn't follow it for that reason. But I liked the idea because it made me reflect more every month on what I was getting. So I would light candles and I would talk to him and I would, um, you know, share different things. And I remember that on the fourth month, when I lit the candle, I said, wow, Andre, all this time you were trying to receive love from me and from people around you. And you did it in such a way that nobody understood what, what really your intention was, but I see it now. And take your time. I remember saying that, um, all the times where I was telling him that he was so closed off and I couldn't receive love. It was me. I was talking about myself. He was your mirror. Mm -hmm. He was your mirror. So I thanked him for that lesson. I thanked him for letting me see that. And I understood that I didn't allow myself to fully feel vulnerable with him. And that in itself made me feel more guilt and regret. And just those feelings by itself, I remember saying to myself, oh my God, I would much rather open my heart, be vulnerable with someone, give myself because that feels more authentic than to hide how I truly feel 
because now I understand that everything is a mirror. And now I understand that if someone rejects my love, it's not because they're rejecting me. It's because they're, they can't handle that love. They're rejecting it for themselves. To help them. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the lesson of unconditional love. And then also with that came forgiveness because I needed to forgive myself for not knowing at that time what I was doing. Right. And for constantly throwing it back at him. So I had to forgive myself and I worked on forgiveness around that because I felt like you can only truly unconditionally love your someone when you love yourself and when you forgive yourself for all the harm that you have might have imposed on someone, even though you know it's for a higher, for the greater good. Right. Now, forgiveness is really about letting go, letting it go, right? And acceptance. Yes. It's not about that things are going to change on the other end of it or whatever it has more to do forgiveness is more to do with you than the person you're exactly with, right? exactly the forgiveness is it's like releasing this big burden that you're holding on right because if you're angry with yourself then you're not allowing yourself to fully receive what is meant to be on the other side of that but when you understand that these things are happening for a grander purpose and that they are not really gone. They are with you. And that's the big thing. Like when somebody says they died, I feel like I can't, I don't like saying, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for your loss. I'm not sorry for your loss. There is a reason why you have that loss. And I'm sorry that this might be excruciating for you is really what I want to say. However, I can't look at these things as a, as something that happens to you. We need to have the perspective on understanding that even death, even if they had a heart attack, death of any kind is still is still there for you to experience something. And for a lot of a lot of people, it's also about identity. People don't realize that when a person passes, that it's just the body that dies, but the soul moves on right? Because they don't yes. really believe in reincarnation. They and don't so know. they don't know that their reincarnation exists. And so they, they sit in this grief. But when you are looking at the life lessons, identity is one of them. You have to understand that part of this lesson that you're learning is that you are a soul in a human vessel. You are a God energy. And so there's your identity right there. And it's something that a lot of people are slowly picking up on, but because we live in this society where it's like Christian, I don't know, principles in the political system, it's literally ingrained and programmed in our DNA that we are just here for a temporary, whatever, how many years that you're supposed to live. And then you go to hell or heaven. And that's it. So people don't know that there's a grander mission. If people knew that there was reincarnation and that they, their soul keeps coming back, then and they would. They didn't get the lessons that they didn't pick up. Exactly. They're going to get it next time. So exactly. Try to get it now. <laughs> and it keeps on. It keeps on going on this crazy karmic loop right. because they don't know that there's growth involved. So now my mission is to help people understand. Oh, let's look at this grander picture. You are a soul here to learn lessons, so that you can stop the karmic cycles that you kept coming back here for, and finally be on the growth path and ascend and do something greater with your mission. Absolutely. And boy, I, I can't wait to get with you into that ascension idea. But before we do that, and I can relate to so much of what you're saying, because a lot of it pertains to my own journey. But within the fourth month of your husband's death, you illuminated your years of anguish by utilizing your own, and this is the meat of this interview, by in, utilizing your own advanced healing method called the quantum enlightenment system. So tell us about that, how you discovered it and how it helped you to heal. And then we're going to follow up because everybody wants to know about your wealth manifestation formula. So like, <laughs> tell us about all of that, please. Okay. So um, when I, when I was on this path in the beginning of my journey with my husband, 
we, um, you know, he was trying to heal me. His goal was like, let me heal Ellen and let me heal my pains in my body. So he found some divine healer and the divine healer was, um, giving us information did some kind of soul blueprint, gave us information about why we're here, what we're meant to experience and all that jazz tried to give us some healing stuff. And, um, I remember I was on, like, like I said, I didn't have the true transformation. Well, I didn't have the first breakthrough, I'm going to say, um, until several years into our marriage. And the reason why was because I kept hearing, because that, that particular person who, who was doing the divine healing was telling us about this, uh, light body work. And I thought that's crazy. I don't, I don't understand why we would put devices in our, in our, in our bodies. I don't know why we would come here and, and hide our light. Like makes no fucking sense. I'm not doing it. That's fucking nuts. Goodbye. And so it went to the point where, and my angels kept, kept like throwing it at me because he was just bringing people who did it into my, into my uh, life. And I didn't want to do it. And so it went to the point where I was doing all these other things. I got so depressed one day in addition to another time that I was suicidal. And I remember uh, this, at this point, my, my son is already born. I don't know how old he was at that point, but I just felt like I can't do this. Like wow. I'm done. And there was so much, so many emotions that were coming up that I just, I couldn't deal with it. And so the angels brought it to my face again. And I said, by the way, when you see angels, just for everybody, hold your thought. But just for everybody who's listening to you, what do the angels look like to you? I don't see bring... them. I hear them. Okay, so you hear them. And how do you know that it's them? It's just, you just know or? It's just a knowing. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> to me, it's just like. identify themselves or just, you just feel the vibration? It's just a knowing. Angels. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. Like, I, I've always felt like I can feel the difference that it's angels or I can feel the difference if it's something else. And I also had to do some work on intuition versus ego and understand the language difference between them, between the two to understand it because it could all sound like you. So um, getting back to the story, the angels were showing to me that uh, this is, this is what you needed to do. So I said, the hell with it. I'm already like, I have nowhere to go. This is like my last straw. So I did the program, the light body. And I remember after the, I think the fourth or the fourth session, I was like a different person. I started going on the treadmill in my house. And um, I, the, the day I went on the treadmill, I, the angels told me start recording. And I thought, what, what am I recording? And so I just hit the start recording like the, on, on my iPhone the voice memo and I'm on the treadmill working out and talking and whatever they were pouring into me. I was just saying, and I, that, that's You're how downloading. my podcast started too, because I was like, all right, whatever. I'm just going to put this together. And I didn't want it to be like, you know, the podcast that everybody would have. I want it to be pure, raw information, nothing cut out nothing filtered. And so I put out all the information that they wanted to give me. Um, and that was my, my first breakthrough. And so I started looking more into what else is there because I feel like I, I hit something here, but I, I want to keep this going. I really like this. And so I continued my journey. I was researching, you know, different ways to transform. I didn't know what I was looking for, but I was looking. So I just kept on going through all these different people. Everyone was talking about like the mind, reframing the mind and something didn't sit right with me. So I just kept on looking and looking and looking. And one day I'm in the shower and I'm listening to something. And all of a sudden this big download came in and I thought, oh my God, I got it. Okay. I ran out of the shower, everything that I've learned and received and whatever resonated with me, um, I put together, I, this is all through them. Like they're, they're guiding me, do this, do this, do this. So I just started putting all together and I realized, okay, this looks like something to do with healing. And I just started testing it on people. And at first it was called the divine matrix upgrade. 
But a couple of years later, I heard to shift the name. So I changed the name to the quantum enlightenment system because it literally is making you more enlightened and connected to your soul. And so our higher self. And so um, that's how the quantum enlightenment system was born. And I obviously, after a case is study. Is it something that you do energetically with people? Is that? It is. Um, so basically, I I take your name and I basically pull up your energetic blueprint of what you're meant to experience. I also use my, and with that comes with limiting belief programs. So when you have your soul blueprint behind it is also, here's all the limiting belief programs that you're going to have installed into your field so that you can experience all these types of um, things that are going to bring this out. And so I also included my um, life lessons that I've learned and how I use them into the program. So I've, I've put that together. And so now that's how the blueprint was born because I was told you need to show people that reframing their mind doesn't fucking work. So like, that's what I, that's what I did. And, you know, I feel like I'm fighting with everybody because I'm trying to explain to them. It doesn't work. That's not the way it works. Um, and it's I even more like and, eliminating the blocks and all then or reprogramming. Is that how you would express it? Yeah. So basically what it is, it's, it's literally dissolving all those programs. It's like deleting them from your system, like a computer, and then having the opportunity to upload more of your higher frequency into your new, com into your computer. How freeing that must be for people. It is. Like Absolutely. I had a NLP practitioner. So I had a case study I did, you know, want to do a case study to understand what this is because I had no idea what I was working with. And I realized what it was actually doing. So I had one NLP practitioner and she, you know, did the reframing of her mind for her own self. And she said, you know, I don't think I'm going to need all the sessions. And the case study came with four sessions. And I said, all right, let's just see what comes up. So after the blueprint session, um, we were, she was shocked because she said, I thought that I had cleared all this. And I said, you, it's still in your body. You didn't clear it. You just reframed your mind. What you do when you reframe your mind is create a new neurological pathway that says, okay, think this now when this trauma comes up, but the trauma itself is still there. So you're yeah. not actually removing the trauma. And so that's why a lot of people, even after reframing their mind, still can't manifest what they want because they're still vibrating at this frequency instead of this frequency. That's right. It sounds like they used the Band-Aid instead of, Exactly. Kind it's, of like what Western global. medicine does, right? Here's a pill for the symptom and, but Hey, we never fix the actual problem. Right. So um, that's what the quantum enlightenment system, that's how it was born. And that's what it does. And I use that system. Like I mentioned before, unconditional love is one of the life lessons. And so is forgiveness. And so as I felt certain emotions in my body, I started connecting it to the experiences that I had when I was reflecting on my experiences with Andre and realized that these are the lessons and this is what it came down to unconditional love and forgiveness. And so that's what really helped me to cut all those years out of grief because I realized what the, what I had a contract to learn certain lessons. This is what I needed to learn. And another big lesson is that I learned how to come back to myself. I learned how to love myself unconditionally. I learned how to um, not be codependent anymore. And I learned why I had codependency issues. And all those things that we discussed in the very beginning about how I was so insecure and how I didn't love myself and how all of these things, it this, this death brought to light for me and made me really do, do the work. Coming back to myself, doing the meditations, learning how to meditate for someone who could not get out of her own head, right? right? Made me fully love going into meditations now. And I have like journeys when I go in meditations without needing plant medicine. That's fantastic. It sounds like Andre's death brought, your, brought you life. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Life. And, and you know, I went to... I was dying with him the three months before he, before um, he passed away, I was sick because that he was so depressed that I was taking all his energy 
I had panic attacks like there was no other. I had to stop in the middle of the road several times, oh take God. off my bra, oh cry my, my eyes out because I, I couldn't breathe. I couldn't move. It would be terrible. And like in the middle of nowhere. And I remember the only thing that would, would make me feel better is if I cried. So I would cry it out. I would have fevers. I would have body aches. I went to the emergency room three times throughout the months. And all they said was, there's nothing wrong. And I'm like, I'm coughing up rocks. What do you mean there's nothing wrong? They said, well, there's nothing wrong with you. We did an x-ray. There's no fluid build up. You seem fine. This is just allergies. And I thought, uh-uh, something's wrong. And when he passed away, all of it stopped. Wow. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's amazing. So while everyone's on the, on the edge of their seats with your story, tell us what this wealth manifestation formula is that you've also developed. So coming back to myself, I realized that um, what, what what everybody really wants is to manifest a better life. And I want people to understand how they can do that. So the manifestation formula is basically R plus A plus C. Before you decide what it is that you want, which you can do, you can say, I want this. But if you blindly go into saying, I want this, you're not going to get shit out of it because you need to recognize, which is what R is for, Recognize why you're in your current reality at this moment. What is, what is it that caused you to be in this current reality? What choices did you make? What emotions? Recognize the emotions, the thoughts, the belief systems, the attachments that you have, the language that you use on a daily basis, the values that you carry, the choices that you've made, right? Recognize all of that before you can go into your manifestation because otherwise you're just going to keep failing. Then A is for acceptance. This is the part where you realize and accept that all those things that created your current reality is on you. It's not to blame you, but it's to say that there's a bigger thing under acceptance. It's the law of reflection. Everything that you are experiencing outside of you is literally a mirror of what's happening inside of you. And so every trigger that you have every experience that causes you to feel an emotion is basically telling you that there's something inside of you that needs to be worked on. And so when you can see that and you take acceptance and full responsibility that I'm the one who created this life, I'm the one who did all this. So now that means I can also change it. So we go to choice. So you're empowering people. Yes, you're empowering people. You're teaching them that they have a choice that they don't have to be victims to their stories. Exactly, because essentially, this the law of reflection is basically saying, "Hey, you don't have to change anybody else or change outside of things, but only look within yourself. Change what's inside. Heal this inside you, and then once you are healing that, you will open the doors." for you to receive more abundance, more abundance of love, more abundance of bliss, more financial freedom. And so what happens is with choice, it's number one, you chose to have these experiences so that you can learn certain lessons. And number two, what choices are you gonna make now? How? What choices are you gonna use with your language? What choices are you gonna use with, with healing yourself? What choices are you going to use with how, what you're doing with the emotions that you're feeling? Because if we have any type of emotions about something, it's because something internally within us has not been healed. That's so true. That is so true. So and that's what the life actually, lessons are. That's the life lessons. You trip yourself up. So what you're doing is you're, you're helping them to energetically op uh, remove the blockages that are holding them back from yes. gaining wealth and everything that they're doing. And they're, you're shifting their current reality so that it's reflected, that how they see things is reflected within and and in their experience, right? Yes, and once they're ready for that, then they're ready to go into the quantum enlightenment system because now you've accepted this, you understand it, you know what your life lessons are. You could either roll with it and say, okay, I'm gonna see how my life shows me these lessons or you could go onto the quantum enlightenment system and really take that, make that choice to transform on a cellular level because that's what the quantum enlightenment system does. I was so 
blessed to be able to bring this work out there. And you know, the three things, I don't remember if I hear, remember all the three things, but I remember hearing that healing is not meant to be hard. It's supposed to be easy. And the spiritual community had created this realm of, of so much healing after the healing. It's like, it's crazy that you have to constantly go through the trauma, relive the trauma. And nobody wants to, I didn't want to do that. I did that. And I thought, what the hell? I did that already. Work? Huh? <laughs> yeah, I did that already. I don't want to do it again. Yeah. I don't want to relive this stuff. But basically they were saying that we're meant to accelerate our healing. Healing can be so easy. There's does not need to be painful. And we are meant to be connected to our God selves now. Which the plan needs, which leads me to my next question. Speaking of connected to our God self, we have an emerging shift in consciousness and awareness on its way to what's called 5D. Everyone's like, what is this? Someone recently asked me, what is this 5D thing? Please explain it to me. So I'm going to let you explain it to them. And okay. what is the talk of a higher vibration all about, which is about 5D? Can you like enlighten, literally enlighten us as to what 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 is the deal with 3D, the 5D, what's going on here? All right. So we are made up of frequencies, right? Um, everything is frequency. Sound is frequency. Our name carries a frequency. The emotions have a frequency. Everything is about vibration and frequency. Okay. So if there's a certain frequency attached to different emotions, if you're carrying those emotions in your physical vessel, then those are the experiences you're going to constantly see because it's reflecting what, what negative vibrations or low vibrations, I'm going to say you are holding. Okay. So you can look at it at a scale of one to 10, for example, even though that's not the case, but it's different Hertz. But if you're looking at 10 as being enlightened, nine as being love, right? Um, and then one as being in fear, two being in, in like hate or whatever. If you're carrying these codes of fear and, and hatred or jealousy and whatever that's in the lower end of the stick on the rating system, that's your vibration. That's what you're going to constantly be seeing so you can look inside yourself. But if we're looking at, higher vibrations, you go up the scale, right? And so we're looking at being at enlightened, love, courage, bliss, whatever, joy, what any of those frequencies that, that are at the higher end of the stick, because really we're meant to experience these things, not to keep us down, but to keep us going and learning and growing. And so when you can transmute all those things and say, there's a lesson here, like with grief, with some, with losing someone, there's a lesson here. Now I'm going to look at that lesson and be able to transmute that and alchemize it into something that's better. There's a bigger purpose for it, right? So your energy changes because now you've come into acceptance of it. You've come to realize that there there's love for this, this um, situation. There's love for this experience because it's teaching me something right? So that changes your vibration. Now, what happens is we decide to come here with these contracts and, and low vibrations and, 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 and limiting belief programs and stuff like that, because we are meant right now, especially to shift all those things. When we dissolve it, delete it out of our program, right? Out of our computer. And we start carrying and embodying more of our soul. Our soul is a higher vibrational energy. It's, it's on the, the higher dimensions, okay? So if it's a higher dimension and we are embodying that, that creates us to be at a higher vibrational plane. So that's what creates the 5D. Right now, Earth had shifted into 5D. So because Earth itself had shifted its vibration into a higher plane, now it's bringing all of humanity with it. So you, you will see a lot of these things coming to light. The stupidity that we see in politics, I don't even watch the politics, but the stupidity we see in politics, which people constantly tell me about, it's to help people realize how dumb our system is so that they can wake up. All of it is coming to light so people can start realizing something's wrong here. I need to see other ways for us to live, right? And that opens up the pathway. And people suffering with, and hate and all, and all negative emotions are really what you want yeah. to rise to is the love and the in the collective consciousness right yes and what i want to say about unconditional love um is that 
We are not putting conditions on everything, on anything. Our experiences, our, the people we're around, any of it, we're not putting any conditions. Meaning if something seems good or bad, you're basically putting condition. I'm not gonna love this experience because it seems bad, right? That's not unconditional love. When you get into the vibration of really unconditionally loving yourself and your experiences and everything, it's because you've realized that everything that you're experiencing is for your highest growth. It is meant for you to be able to elevate in frequency, no matter how bad it may seem, because at the other side of it, it's actually really good for you. Right? So I do think I answered your question. And, yeah, do your healing and you can approach 5D and change your life. So let's talk about all the ways that people, you can help everyone to change their lives. So you've got a soul, your soul care coach specializing in the Akashic Records. You have, you have a free Akashic Records call. You have a high vibe blueprint call. You have a manifest accelerator. You have a quantum accelerator group program. Tell us all about everything. Ellen, it, it, so, and you know, a few of them may not even quite understand about the Akashic Records. So if you want to give us a short definition, just tell them how you can help them with all these different things that you're doing. The Akashic Records is basically like a Google search of your, your soul, right? What has your soul been through? What past lives? What contracts did you come here with? Um, all of that jazz. And the way I see it is that the Akashic Records is actually like downloaded in our physical vessel or the, the records itself. It's downloaded in our physical vessel in our cells um, because it's part of our spirit. It's our soul's blueprint, right? Soul's library. And so if we're embodying our soul, that means all that information is here. And that means that we have the ability to be able to dissolve contracts, dissolve certain um, emotions or belief patterns that are no longer serving us, dissolve DNA um, from, our, from our ancestors that are causing some of these blockages. Um, so the Akashic Records is an opportunity for us to be able to review what is holding you back. Um, I wouldn't say that it's the best like psychic way to look at your future because there's infinite possibilities. And so what may be given now as your future is dependent on the current frame of your emotions. And, and if you choose you change, to shift that, it can, right, it'll shift, as right? you shift that, it does, it does change because it opens up a different uh, possibility. So um, that's one, the blueprint, the high five, like blueprint call, like I said, is basically like a deep dive into your energetic blueprint, your soul blueprint. And it's actually going to tell you what living belief patterns you are holding, what's meant to be transformed and what um, life lessons you're working with in this lifetime. So that too can be transformed. So it just basically gives you a blueprint of this is what you basically need to work on so that you can be able to elevate in frequency. Um, the quantum manifestation um, accelerator program. That's the group program that I have for women. And I'm probably going to be opening that up to men soon too. Um, that one is currently five weeks, but I'm looking to expand that. I'm not sure at the moment, but it's a group program designed to teach people what, how to use the laws of physics to manifest. That's why it's called quantum manifestation, because it's meant to teach you how to use quantum physics to be able to manifest the things that you are desiring. And That's it's about the really love freeing and really helpful for people. Yeah. And, and right. And is there anything else that you want to mention that you're doing? And then there's the quantum enlightenment system, which is a seven week program, but that is one-on-one -on -one individualized to each person. Um, and that one is basically where you literally have a massive transformation because it's one-on-one -on -one with you so every, they get the whole kahuna they get well everything. it's not only that yeah it's not only that they actually dissolve all those things that are holding them back and then we upload so it's a three-phase program and i like to sell it as a three-phase program even though i'm allowing to break it up a little bit i sell it as a three-phase program because what i heard was we need to accelerate now. And this program is meant to accelerate your growth. So this is definitely going to be able to dissolve your computer, upload new frequencies, make your physical vessel strong enough 
to be able to hold your higher light because now that's what you're going to be doing. And once you're connected to your higher self and more connected to your God self, you've got the manifestation powers. You're able to manifest on on the fly anytime you want, whenever, however, because that's your power. You are coming back to your own power. And then, though, what I love about this is that the third phase is <laughs> activating whatever needs to be activated or uploading new frequencies or codes into your, oh, into wow. your blueprint that is going to get you onto the pathway to fulfilling your soul mission. That's fantastic. Do you have an offer today for our Grief and Rebirth podcast audience? Oh, yes. If anyone wants to try one of your offerings? So um, I would love to give them a complimentary Akashic reading. They can text I'm ready to manifest to 561-862-2932. Um, and I, I mean, I, I would recommend to contact me and do a reading no matter what. And that way they can have a more of understanding and feel for my energy. And it's a no obligation right. call. And there'll be all kinds of information about you with the show, soul notes and all of that kind of thing. Thank you. So, oh, our pleasure. And you have a message about the importance of healing that you'd like to share? Because we're talking about healing. People who are resistant. Yeah, I'm not happy, but I should... I don't know if I'm going to go there. Maybe I'll learn in another lifetime. What's what is a good reason that they should do their work now? Because they are here now. And because they are here now, they're meant to do the work now. And because it's coming to their forefront, it's meant to get them out of out of that fear and to create something more. I know that a lot of people they're they want to stay into the uncomfortable because they don't know, even though it's not comfortable. They know what to expect in, in this, but they don't know what to expect out there. But I can tell you from my experience, and I'm sure you can too, that once you move past all those fears of moving forward, you will feel so much more freedom being yourself and being in your body because you can actually experience what joy feels like. You can actually experience what it, it feels to be free from all those thoughts and, and anxiety and body pains and whatever, because now you're fully connected to your higher self and you've got the pathway knowing that you're on the track to growth. That's absolutely true. And it's so freeing and it's so wonderful. And we've both experienced it. And when you've touched on joy, what is the Ellen tip for finding joy in life? Healing. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. That's what this whole podcast is about. Heal, heal. You'll feel so much joy. You'll help, you know, you'll be able to experience so much yeah. joy in your life, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't know where I would be if I was still in, in that drought, but the person that I used to be to who I am now, it's wow. I never thought that I would get here, but I'm so proud of the work that I've done. And even I can say that Andre's death was a gift. No matter how painful it is for my son, no matter how painful it is for his family and for my family, I know that at the end of the day, he's still here with me. I can connect with him at any time. I don't consider myself a medium, although I do have those skills. I don't like to connect to spirits, but I can say that I know that he's here at any time for me to connect to and that he, he's not gone. No, we, I always tell people it is not over when it's over. Exactly. In some ways it's just beginning. <laughs> exactly. And he's here supporting me on my journey as I continue to, to do what I'm meant to do here. Beautiful. It's wonderful. Thank you. You're <laughs> welcome. Thank you. Ellen, in closing, I want to thank you for your dedication to helping humanity awaken, which is what you're doing, and stop the cycles of misery and suffering through this quantum enlightenment system, which is helping people to experience this important shift in consciousness that's going to allow us to serve our life's purposes and, the, and have lives filled with happiness, joy, abundance, and inner peace. And who wouldn't want that? And I also want to thank you from my heart for this really enlightening interview that has illuminated, I believe, a positive future on its way for all of us. Oh, and here, yes. right? You. You're yeah. welcome. And here is such a loving reminder, everyone, that you can see the show notes and all Grief and Rebirth podcast episodes on IreneWeinberg.com. And make sure to follow us and like us on social at, at Irene S. Weinberg on Instagram, Facebook, and wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. And while you're here, 
for those of you who are listening, you can find my two books linked in the show notes. And for those who are watching on YouTube, you can check on my two books listed above. As I like to say, to be continued, thank you from my heart, Ellen. Many blessings. Thank you. Thank you.